we're going to go over some examples using the step-by-step -step method of translation. So this is for exercise 1116 uh, in the book from Language, Proof, and Logic. What I've done here is opened up Montague's sentences, and what I see here are some partially translated sentences. So if I look at, for example, the sentences that we need to translate, so let me do a share this other screen. What you'll see here is that what I'm trying to translate is that every cube is to the left of every tetrahedron. Let me actually maybe paste this into Tarski's world. Uh, let me share this on the screen. Tarski's world again. Here we go. So what I'm trying to translate here, right, I've just put the English sentence. You didn't, I just added this uh, file, or I just added this line. So. Uh, I've just copied and pasted this here. So I see that every cube is to the left of every tetrahedron. That's ultimately what I'm trying to translate. Using the step-by-step -step method translation, right, the partially translated sentence first is the every cube bit. That's the noun phrase. And so that's what we see here with every cube. And now we need to take this verb phrase is to the left of every tetrahedron, and we need to translate that. So if I think about how to translate uh, x is to the left of every tetrahedron. Let me sort of copy that here, just so you can see how I'm doing this. When I think about how to translate that, I notice that there's another quantifier here. There's this universal quantifier. And what I want to say is, if, you know, if I temporarily think of x as a name, I want to say b is to the left of every tetrahedron. So when I think about how to translate that, I would want to say something like there uh, for all y. Uh, if y is a tetrahedron, then uh, I want to say x is to the left of y, or b is to the left of y, right? I'm thinking interchangeably here between treating x as a name just to help me with the translation part. So what I then would have is something like left of b, where b is actually just standing in for x, so I'm going to use x, and then the thing that x is left of is the tetrahedron. So looking at this particular sentence, the way that I would translate that into first order logic is just the translation strategies that we've looked at before when we just had single quantifiers, and it would look like this. So now what I can do is actually copy that into this argument position. I'm going to take out all of those dots. And so now what I should notice is that this instance of x right here is actually bound by this outer quantifier. Right? The x that is left of y, uh, we should already have met the condition of being a cube. And so now if I check to make sure this is a sentence by uh, verifying it, I get the plus. So the plus means uh, that it is in fact a sentence. It just can't be evaluated because I don't have a world with any objects in it right now. Uh, remember, if it, this were an asterisk instead, then it would mean that it's not actually a sentence. So a plus sign is good. A plus sign means this is in fact an actual sentence. Okay, so let's do one more. Um, we wanna say, let's look at say number, um, Two. So with number two, the bit that I need to now translate or focus on is this part. Right? X is in back of a large cube. How do I translate that? Well, I notice that a large cube is an existentially quantified sentence. So I would have something like there exists a y. I'm being careful here not to use a variable that already exists. And I now need to say some things about that y. I need to say that it's a large cube. To do that, I need to say that y is a cube and y is large. And there's a, another condition, right? The, uh, the back of predicate here. So the uh, back of predicate uh, is going to say something about or is going to connect 
the, uh, the x, right? This is the, uh, the free variable when we're thinking just in terms of this sentence. We're saying that x is in back of all those things that, uh, that y, all the conditions that y had met, namely that it is a large cube. So here, you'll notice that this is now a translation of x is back of a large cube. This, is, this translation is strictly speaking not a complete sentence because the instance of x that we have in here is in fact free, it's not bound. So this is a well-formed formula, but it's not yet a complete sentence. However, when we place this inside the scope of the um, partially translated sentence that we already have, you'll notice that we have a quantifier, right, binding x. So because we're putting the second partly translated uh, sentence that we've done here into the antecedent position of the material conditional, this instance of x right here is now actually going to be bound by that universal quantifier. And so if we check that, again, we get a plus sign, and that means that we actually have uh, a complete uh, sentence. Okay, so this is giving you what this exercise is doing, right, is helping you see how to transition, how to apply the step-by-step -step method by doing the first component for you and then asking you to do the second component. In follow-up exercises then, you'll see how you need to do both of those steps um, by yourself.